world's top skaters to reveal the spills, chills, and thrills of championship skating. It's all next on our Inside Look at Ice Skating. Welcome to the E! Original Special Ice Skating. For more than 50 years, ice skaters have captured the hearts of audiences around the world, balancing athletic jumps with moving choreography. It's a sport and it's an art. So it's that unique combination, I think, that sets our sport apart from any other sport. It really becomes um, athletics and entertainment and um, you know, every skater brings something different to the show. As a result, ice skating is one of the most popular sports on television. Figure skaters may appear fragile, but they are as solid as the ice they skate on. Hours of intense training and horrific falls make these athletes tough. But being able to withstand the immense pressures of competition is what really makes a champion. Elite figure skating coach Frank Carroll has witnessed this firsthand. I've never met a really talented and highly successful skater, I'm talking about world champions, national champions, that didn't have nerves of steel. An ability to get out there in front of 25,000 people and look them in the eye and deliver. You have to want to be out there. Millions of people are... Millions! Everyone's watching you. The whole world is waiting for you to win or lose. You have to see yourself you know, accomplishing things and you have to go for it. This strategy has worked well for some of skating's legendary champions. In the late 40s, Dick Button went for it and wowed audiences by landing the first triple jump in competition. Twenty years later, the public fell in love with Peggy Fleming's grace and elegance. And in the late 70s, Dorothy Hamill spun her way to Olympic gold with her trademark, the Hamill Camel. She quickly became America's sweetheart and one of skating's most famous stars. Dorothy appeared in numerous commercials, paving the way for future champions. The rewards are quite financial now. Uh, there's a bit of celebrity status that goes with being a figure skater that wasn't there before. It's become a big business. There's millions of dollars being offered for TV contracts and the skaters that are really prominent have a chance to, to make a great deal of money and become superstars. Superstardom may become a reality for this young brother and sister pair team. Off ice, Johnny and Tiffany Stiegler seem like normal California teens, rollerblading, going to the beach, and having a good time with their friends. Did you hear your head? But on the ice, these are no ordinary kids. At just 14 and 16, Tiffany and Johnny have already won three national titles and are well on their way to becoming America's next top duo. We didn't really go into the sport knowing anything what was going to happen or anything about the sport. And it just, little by little, it got bigger and now we're here. Despite their youth, this pair has a presence on the ice far beyond their years. Carol Probst, owner of the prestigious Ice Castle Training Center, knows Johnny and Tiffany well. They are so great out there. Um, I skated professionally for 10 years, and I don't think I ever got to the point where they are now. I mean, they are so outgoing and so um, unafraid to let their feelings show on the ice. It's taken me 14 years to sort of grow into an entertainer. It's like these kids know it already at such a young age. It's amazing. Their strength comes from their unity. My dad always told me if you take you know, one pencil, that you can break it. If you take two, it's harder. So they become strong. They are also fearless when it comes to trying some of the sport's most dangerous moves. I think it's really cool, like doing twists and you know, launching her up as high as I possibly can or doing throws and like, you know, seeing her land like 40 feet down or whatever. So. The first time we tried to throw a triple loop, it was just like, you're so high and it's just like, you like flying. She's the one that's really the gutsy one. She goes for it. You know, I, she takes some of the hardest falls I've ever seen anybody take, and she gets right up and keeps going. Gutsiness has made Johnny and Tiffany a team to watch. And according to their mother, Linda Stiegler, these kids have just reached a critical moment in their career. It's their first year at the high international level. 
it's their first year to compete against the best in the world, and they're very young to be doing this. We just want to skate our best and show everybody, you know, like, that we're here, because uh, all the junior, like, judges know us, but neither of the senior judges, so we just want to show everybody, you know, what we can do. <laughs> During the next hour, we'll follow Johnny and Tiffany Stiegler as they diligently prepare for one of the most difficult years in their skating career. That program I was very happy with. See firsthand what it takes to become a champion. Yes. We'll also hear what drove skating's brightest stars. I always wanted it so badly. To the top of their fields. There's no greater feeling. And go behind the scenes of one of the world's top ice shows. So this time, guys, can we clear the tunnel? But first, when we return, a look back to Johnny and Tiffany's early years on ice and the ups and downs of becoming a champion. They walk the walk and talk the talk. Welcome back to the E! Original Special Ice Skating. At an age when most kids are playing in sandboxes, Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler could be found gliding on ice, or at least trying to. Older sister Stephanie's success in the rink is what prompted little Johnny and Tiffany to take up the sport. Stephanie, my oldest daughter, was the one that wanted to skate, and the other two, we just... Like I say, it was a playground for them, and, and, but you saw that they had the potential to skate well. And skate well they have. At 11, Johnny and his 9-year-old sister Tiffany grabbed first place at the Intermediate Nationals. I got sick the night before. I had the flu, so I couldn't skate, and I went to the hospital and got an IV. And then, um, like an hour after the IV, I came to the rink and did some lifts and went on the ice and won Intermediate Paris. Two years later, in 1995, the duo triumphed again with a first place at the National Novice Competition. And then, in 1997, they took another first place at the National Junior Competition. When we won our junior title, that was when, like, things got more serious and, you know, we started getting asked for internationals and TV shows and it was, you know, and it made us like, whoa, you know, we're one of the top teams. At their first national seniors competition, this top team surprised everyone and placed fourth. We wanted to be in the top eight, and we were fourth, and we were just like so excited. Johnny and Tiffany's success hasn't come without sacrifice. Every week, they leave their dad behind in Manhattan Beach, California. With their mother, they commute to Ice Castle, the world's largest international training center, two and a half hours away. We go up to Lake Arrowhead, um, for five days on Sunday night, and then we come down on Friday night to Manhattan Beach. At first, traveling from, you know, Manhattan Beach to Arrowhead every, every weekend and staying, you know, being away from my dad during the week was really hard, but now it's, I've gotten so used to it, it's not that bad. I always say I'm like the postman. It's, whether it's foggy, rainy, snowy, nothing keeps me from getting back down <laughs> to Los Angeles. Before I go to bed, I call up and talk with Linda, and I'll get the kids on the phone and, and uh, talk about the day and what's going on. What's going on is a rigorous training agenda. We wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and we um, go to school at 7. And then from school we do the afternoon session and then we skate um, all day. And we, in between we do um, math tutor and we also do ballet. We go to sleep and we start over. Ten-time world champion and three-time Olympic gold medalist, Irina Rodnina, coaches Tiffany and Johnny. Now, you know what they want. Yeah. She skated horrible. She skated great. She's won worlds more than anybody has, more than Olympics than anybody has. And she's been there in so many situations that I think that no matter what happens in our skating career, she knows how to, you know, handle it and make it so it's, everything will be fine. You, I remember for myself when I learned, like, I... Push my feet back up, no doubt. She has made us a lot stronger in our stroking, and um, she's helped things like our twist and our lift because she's um, so good at technical. You did great, you can be perfect every competition in every moment. 
And sometimes these little kids, they need support because they work like crazy. So many people, they don't know how it's difficult and how it's dangerous this work. You go from doing a huge throw two-thirds of the way across the ice at 100 miles an hour, and then once you land that, you go around and you fly above your brother's head going 100 miles an hour, and come down from that, and then you go around and do a side-by-side -side jump. Performing with such precision sometimes comes at a painful price. Go, go! One wrong twist, and the consequences can be severe. <laughs> down in your legs, please. And you turn me. Sit down with me. A little, little fall. Now, every day I fall in the legs. She doesn't yeah, care. because she no can't fall her legs. She, she doesn't care. She says, she says sorry, but it's the same mistake every time. Tiffany, not, not really. Care, you must Tiffany and Johnny are skating on thin ice with each other at the moment. But they know that to become world-class skaters, the practice must continue. Yep. The ups and downs are inevitable and relentless when trying to become the best. I hit my head and then she landed on my head, so it doesn't like scare me at all. Like every time it happens, even if it gets worse and worse. Like, you know, I've I've gone so far now that it's like it's like smoking cigarettes, you know, you it's like addicting, you can't stop and no matter what happens, just keep going. Later in the show, Tiffany sustains an injury at a critical moment and finds it hard to keep going. Everybody's telling me to pull out. My coach is telling me to shoot me with some Novocaine. But first, when we return... Johnny, you slow, slow your arms, like, come to me. Smoothing out the rough edges. 